community colleges, we've forgotten about CUNY systems, we've forgotten that those are places that we need to support and get an education. Unfortunately, many of us have gone for um, name brand and we are in debt over and beyond what we can in fact pay for. But this isn't any different than what we do when we go to the store anyway. We go to the store knowing full well you only have $100 and you spent $700. The society says you need to have an education and you go for the million dollar education because that's how it works out. And so this, this sister is an example of what many people are facing. Stuck in a rock and a hard place, you need to have the job, but the job compromises the ability to pay the debt. The debt says that you have to do this, and so the beginning thing is to no negotiate. And we can talk one-on-one -on -one about how you would do that with your creditors and how you would do that with letters and whatever legal action you need to do. But you need to have a more active voice. We need to have active voices because that's what corporations do. They say, I can't pay this. They give the rationale, they give the reasoning, and they give a suggestion, and there is, in fact, a conversation. We come in and we accept what's given. We take it because it says S-A-L-E. I say everything is negotiable. Until you tell me no, and after that, I will still press you. And then you gotta bring other people in to press together. My name is Sherrod, I'm from No Star Academy, and, <laughs> and um, my question is, in, class, in my English class, we're going over like redlining and how banks, like they take, they take away people's homes and like they raise like the rent just so that they can take out the people out of their homes and move other people in. So what is your, um, what is your, um, what do you think about that? <laughs> because we, we really all are here because we love you and so many others just like you. Yeah. And that's, that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. We want the future to be better for you. To be better for you. Black, brown, red, yellow, and Asian. Especially the younger generation. So when you learn about that red lining, I'm glad your teachers are teaching you that. <laughs> that is wrong and it's gangster behavior. That's what gangster is. The brother raised that question about gangster. Anytime poor people organize because they love justice and are concerned about people catching hell, ain't nothing gangster about that at all. Mm -mm. Exactly. Not at all. That's <coughs> resistance. Now it's true, you gotta be informed resistance now. I'm speaking to my older brother at this point. It has to be informed, but ain't nothing gangster. We are countering gangsterism. All right. See, that's the history of black people. You see what I mean? We got terrorism of 244 years of slavery coming at us. Here come Frederick Douglass. Did he have a gangster element in his program? No, he want freedom for everybody. Here come Jim and Jane Crow. That's American terrorism, too. Here come Ida B. Wells Barnett. Did she have a gangster element? She said, no, I want rights and liberties for everybody. And we have to come up with strategies and tactics that are radical, militant, but motivated by love. We love this brother right here, and others brought across the board. But justice is what love looks like in public. And if you love the people, you can't stand the fact they're being treated unfairly. If you love them, you can't stand the fact they're being treated unjustly. And that red lining is unjust. And it's wrong, no brother. And I'm glad you're reading about it. And the question is, how do we respond to it in such a way that those precious people who are being pushed out, that they're treated justly, they're treated rightly. You understand what I'm saying, my brother? Yes. God bless you, my man.